Hey everyone, how we doing? I want to burn this place down. Yeah, I thought so. I'm feeling the same. Not gonna lie, I'm not, not doing great. I don't think a lot of us, I don't think we're doing so great. So this video I wanted to talk about, one of my favorite things to read about is so fitting for this time that we live in right now. Books that have a lot of female rage. So much female rage. Obviously this list could be like a million books long, but I just picked 10 that were top of mind. Um, so we're gonna go through all of these. Big, big content warnings for these books that I'll be discussing. I'll be discussing aspects aspects of the plot, but I'll try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. But just know that um, some of these descriptions and synopsises may have triggering subject matter, so proceed watching this with caution. Without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, let's hang out and talk female rage in books. Do you have a difficult relationship with your mother-in-law? If you do, I have the perfect book for you, and that book is Mother Thing by Annalise Hogarth. This is such a and I loved it. I loved it because it's so freaking weird. And the cover is just so stunning. I feel like if you like Atessa Moshfane as a writer, you'd probably really like Annalise Hogarth, or at least her first book. I think this is her first book. I feel like you'd really like this. This is about Ralph and Abby who decide to move in with Abby's mother-in-law, Laura, because she's kind of down in the dump. She needs a little more help, needs to kind of be looked after and taken care of. So they decide to move in, save some money. Abby and Ralph are desperately trying to become parents themselves. They're having a lot of issues with fertility and Laura is not a nice person. She has like this death grip on her son and he bends to all of her whims and needs. And she's like, oh, she's just, She's just a little, she can be like that, blah, 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 blah. but she is horrible to Abby, like cruel and living with her is becoming like a hellscape. A little while later, Laura decides to end her life and her ghost decides to start haunting Abby and Ralph in very different ways. Ralph is so depressed, like plunged into this like bottomless depression. Abby is convinced this ghost of Laura is going to destroy her marriage, destroy her relationship, destroy absolutely everything she loves. So Abby soon comes up with a plan to get rid of Laura's ghost and bring back her husband husband and have the life she's always wanted. It takes a very, very unsettling but darkly funny turn. It, it's such an unhinged story, but I found like one of my favorite fictional main characters in Abby. Like she's so hilarious. It had parts had me giggling throughout it, but you also feel all of her rage that's just under the surface was dealing with her absolute hell beast of a mother-in-law. There's times that it gets so intense and it feels stifling and I just loved it. Very unique, very strange, upsetting, great book. I highly recommend this if you haven't picked it up already. It's a pretty, it's a really quick read. It's under 200 pages. I lied. It's under 300 pages. It still reads very, very quickly. So highly recommend Mother Thing. I know I've talked about this book before on my channel. I think I recently had it in my brat video. It's so amazing that this book bears being talked about again for this subject of female rage in particular, because this is like red hot, red hot female rage. And that book is Animal by Lisa Taddeo. Also like one of my absolute favorite, favorite Goodreads reviews has to do with this book. Um, the central point of this book is that after 37 years of being a woman, it's enough to drive a person to kill. That's like the gist of this basically. So this is following Joan, our main character, who has dealt with a lifetime of dealing with absolutely cruel, horrible men. And she has had it. She has had it. After witnessing a very, very shocking act of violence at the beginning of the book, Joan takes off to the hills in Los Angeles to live this very bare bones lifestyle and hunt down this woman who may hold the key to these very traumatic events from her childhood. Like, all the trigger warnings, every single one in this book. Like, holy crap, it gets very violent violent and upsetting for multiple different ways and it goes in multiple different directions but it balances all it all so well. It's such a great character study. I could not put this book down. It's so frenzied at times and almost absurd but like heartbreaking and frustrating and Joan is such an amazing character. You are simultaneously rooting for her and rooting against her 
and there's times where she is the victim and there's times where she is the perpetrator. It's such whiplash, like for sure, such whiplash. But you also feel like such power within Joan for finally just not taking any more crap. It's awesome. I love this book so much. Yeah, I'm very much due for a reread. Hopefully next year I'll get to talk about it again because I love talking about this book. Okay, the next book that I should recommend, I love this book. I let someone borrow it and they've not given it back yet. So this is why I don't lend out books, because I never get them back. And that book is Slewfoot by Brahm. This is great. So great. This follows a young woman named Abatha who arrives at this Puritan col colony, newly married to her very quiet and very sweet husband, who is very much bowled over by her. She's very loud and eccentric and doesn't take crap from anyone. Coming to this very insular religious community has been really hard for her and challenging. She is quickly widowed in a very sad, under very mysterious circumstances. And she's all alone in this very pious <clears throat> patriarchal society. Abatha is fighting for like a, every scrap of freedom she has while her brother-in-law is desperately trying to take away her land and her farm and everything from her. Enter Slewfoot who is a powerful spirit in the woods and he's trying to find out who he is and what his role in this world is, but he also wants to help this young woman beat back all this crazy crap she has to deal with. All this stuff starts to happen, all this good fortune starts to happen, all these amazing events start to happen with, it, with Abatha, and of course no one can look at it any other way than that she is a witch. And this book is stunning! stunning. Stunning. It's so well done. It's a, like a mix of dark fantasy, drama, supernatural, historical fiction. It's fantastic. And Abatha is such a well done character, like straight from the get. She's so freaking cool and a smart ass. I love her. The rage radiating off of these pages is just so palpable. You want to like dive into this book and just join in with Abatha because you're just as fed up with all the other people in this story and you want very much to have have her get exactly what she wants and that it's very much a good for her book and that's all I'm gonna say like I so good if you haven't read it great fall read great Halloween spooky season read it's so good let's continue on the religious trauma train shall we <laughs> with Carrie by Stephen King this is a book that mostly everyone knows the gist of so I won't rehash too much of it but this follows a high school girl Carrie who is relentlessly tormented by her peers and is subject to like constant bullying it's very very sad very hard to read and the movie adaptation by Brian De Palma with Sissy Spacek is actually really really good it's even harder to watch on screen in my opinion than it is to read it. She's bullied both at home, both at school and at home by a fanatically religious mother. Something wakes up in Carrie and she soon discovers she has telekinetic powers and boy will the next people who mess with Carrie regret it. Carrie's mom, Margaret, is probably for me the scariest part of this book. For someone who believes that simply being a woman is evil and she wants to punish her daughter for getting her period as if that's like not a natural part of puberty and being a woman and it's just so oh the dread, the religious trauma, the way we get into Carrie's mind is so well done. Stephen King, this was his first published book and it's just man like you think about like pushing someone, especially a woman, so far that they snap but have the ability to fight back in very incredibly violent ways is just, whew. Okay, and the next one, oh, I'm so excited to talk about this because I don't think I've ever talked about this on my channel and I'm that's kind of blowing my mind because, okay, hold on. Um, the next book I have to recommend is The Edible Woman by Margaret Atwood. Now, Margaret Atwood, I've not talked about this before, is probably my favorite author. I adore her. I've read a ton of her work. A ton of her work. She's most well known for The Handmaid's Tale. I'm a much bigger fan of her fiction in general. It tackles themes like feminism, environmentalism, dystopia, and then the power dynamics in relationships between men and women, between female friends, between family, but mainly between like romantic relationships. This is her first book. I highly recommend- oh my god, can I even pick it up? Yeah, I'm a big fan of her work. Big, big fan. All of these highly recommend. Handmaid's Tale, Cat's Eye, Life Before Men, The Robber Brides, probably my second favorite, Alias Grace, and The Blind Assassin. Just pick them up. Just go to the library, just read them. I love them so much. I love this, my copy of The Handmaid's Tale. She's most well known for The Handmaid's Tale. But The Edible Woman. This is about Marion, who is a new college grad, and she gets engaged to her very dull but respectable lawyer boyfriend, Peter. And then she soon starts losing her appetite for food. 
Obviously this starts to causing issues leading up to her marriage. Then Marion starts to think, maybe I don't want the married life. Maybe the married life's not for me. And it's just <laughs> a lot of these conversations about womanhood and settling down, what that means is being a woman as a housemaker. One of the cleverest things I think about this book is the switching between POVs because once Marion starts becoming unstable, it moves from first person to third person. Marion's viewing her what's happening to her, but she's very removed from it. She's very alienated from herself. I just love these books so much. They're so touching and frustrating. They usually make me, make me want to go live in the woods somewhere alone. <laughs> like away from all these like societal pressures of being a woman and the white picket fence and having kids. That's it. That's your life as a woman. And Margaret Atwood like completely peels all that back. It's like, no, that's not enough. That's not enough for me. Like the Amy Poehler quote, great for you, not for me. And Margaret Atwood is just, she was so ahead of her time. Like so ahead of her time. That's my spiel about Margaret Atwood. Okay, the next book I have is very, very split down the middle, very divisive, but I think it's brilliant. Um, and I haven't talked about it in a long time since I've read it. And that is The Vegetarian by Han King. I don't know how to describe this book. First off, like I said, this book is not for everyone. I had to sit with this one for a bit, but it's so dark and twisted and beautifully written. And I ended up thinking that it was brilliant. Out of all the books on this list, I think this is more of a quiet rage, but it's still, it's, it still gets, it still gets it the job done. Um, this is about our main character who lives a very quiet, controlled and unremarkable life with her very unremarkable, controlling, and quiet husband. And one day she decides to stop eating meat. That's it. And the effect that it starts to take on her marriage and her life. It's basically a three-part novella. Each part sort of functioning as a standalone is told by a different person in the main character's life. Her husband, her brother-in-law, and her sister. I end up just really liking this. Like, uh, it's just like, it's really just about taking back control and not putting up with just crap. Like, I don't want to eat meat anymore. I shouldn't have to eat meat anymore if I don't want to. Why is it such a big issue for you? And like the way that it starts to mentally and physically affect the main character is so crazy and hard to put down and hard to look away from. It's a very strange book. If you're even vaguely interested, I would say go pick up from the library and just read like the first part. And I would recommend reading it versus the audiobook because I feel like you're gonna get lost with the audiobook and it is like a little confusing. I think this one's due for reread as well. All right, next book. Let me start off by saying that if you enjoy very dark atmospheric reads about vampires, like this is the book for you if you have not picked it up already. And that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. <sighs> Oh, this is one of my favorite books I read last year. This is the tale of Dracula's first bride, Constanza, told from her point of view um, through letters. She is saved from the brink of death at the beginning of the book by a mysterious stranger who turns out to be Dracula. She is turned from a medieval peasant into one of his brides and starts to live this very lavish, lush, bejeweled, not want for anything, lust filled, spicy lifestyle. And it's so great. Thought going into it, it would be more about Dracula. It's so much more than that. It's so much about her, the rival brides that she befriends. And she starts to second guess like this life and her love for him and starts to unravel a lot of his secrets. And she has to make a decision whether or not to have freedom or to stay in this very toxic relationship. I just really like that it's a retel retelling of Dracula from a woman's point of view and she is the one who's at the center. It's so original and enticing and there's no camp campy bats or fog or evil henchmen lurking in the shadows. It's it's truly about vampiric obsession with power and lust and control and biting back. I can't believe this came out of my mouth. I'm gonna keep it in. <laughs> Just unputdownable. I love A Dowry of Blood. Love, 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 love it. Next, I have the only short story collection on this list. And it is a banger. This, oh, I think I liked every single short story in this collection, which is very rare for me. And that is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Ah, oh, this is so good. It's so powerful. And it's centered around the experiences of women, mainly queer women, and the horrors inflicted upon their bodies. It's so unique and genre bending. There's a bit of psychological thriller, surrealism, science fiction, comedy, horror, and fantasy. And it's all handled and balanced so well throughout. This collection I feel like left a big mark 
on me, a big impression on me. So I am imparting that onto you if you have not read it. There are eight short stories in this and there are eight stories. I think one of them is a novella technically. There's the first one is like a riff on the the woman with the green ribbon around her neck. Another one is this woman recounting all of her sexual experiences during this plague outbreak. This saleswoman makes a really horrifying discovery when she discovers what is sewn in to the seams of these very beautiful dresses that she sells. There's one, um, I think, I think the novella, uh, especially heinous, Tato takes every single episode of Law and Order SVU and kind of rewrites it and makes it more horrifying. So it's like you're watching it, but it's not these things, they are true episodes, but she rewrites them to make them insane police procedural with doppelgangers, ghosts, and just like really turn it on its head. It sounds insane, but it works. It all works so well together. She's so adept at combining magical realism, body horror, feminism, to create an exploration of women's bodies and the relationship with them and how they are treated in this world, all shapes, all sizes. She's just a master. Like, I think she is such an incredible talent. I will read anything she publishes. Her memoir especially is fantastic. I will always pick up her work. But if you haven't, I highly recommend Her Body and Other Parties. So at least you get a taste of her writing and her imagination. Okay, I have two more books. I have is one of my favorite books. I will not take criticism for this book at all. I think it's great. And that book is Eileen by Tessha Moshvig. Oh boy, this is a book that directs all of its murky gaze on the darkness and anger that lurks within all women, especially women who are at their absolute wits end. It's just so grimy and gritty and gross and I love books that explore that and very unlikable main characters. So if you like your character, your main characters to be likable, shiny, great, do-gooder people, I don't think this is the book for you. This follows Eileen Dunlop who this is set during the Christmas season or the days leading up to Christmas. She works um, as a receptionist at a local young or boys juvenile prison and she goes home to take care take care of her alcoholic father who they live in absolute squalor in this rundown building their neighbors hate them everyone looks down on them they are just trash and filth and poor and not great people and she has all these dreams of escaping having a better life for herself she daydreams constantly and her daydreams like often veer into like very sexual explicit situations with her co-workers but also herself <laughs> Then one day, a very bright, bubbly, beautiful woman named Rebecca starts working at the juvenile center as a new psychologist. Eileen is completely enchanted with her and wants to be her best friend. And for whatever reason, Rebecca doesn't see any of the weirdness with Eileen as anything, anything to like really nod at. So she was like, let's go get drinks, let's hang out. Her affection for Rebecca leads her to a very very insane twist of a climax. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Mosh Fane, like, I think for me this is my favorite of her work. She wrote a book that is so haunting and frightening and demoralizing that you'll start to look at women with suspicion and caution. Yeah, there's no loving grandmas, there's no best friends going out for brunch, <laughs> no devoted wives or caretakers of their husbands or loved ones. It's none of that. It's ugly. It's gross. It's just rage inducing. Like there's there's something about this book that just works for me. Like all parts of it just work for me. So like dark and hilarious and gross and yeah highly recommend if you've not picked up Eileen. Um, and if you haven't read Atesha Moshfane I would highly recommend starting with this book. Okay and the last book I have to talk about is one I read earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. This book slaps and that is the bandit queens by perini shiroff it's not only heartfelt upsetting and brilliant it's so funny <laughs> you wouldn't expect it to be given the subject matter this is about our main character gita who's no good husband it's just gone he just disappeared and the whole village thinks gita murdered him now gita knows she did no such thing but she doesn't correct anyone and then it starts to snowball and he has this reputation this very scary reputation within the village and then it boosts sales in her jewelry business. Other women in the village start to ask her for help with dealing with their horrible abusing husbands and it just kind of goes from there. This touches on like such a wide range of issues from 
the India caste system to the very casual nature of violence against women in India that they accept as part of their daily lives and all of this is by the lens of a murder plot. I love this. It's funny. It's dark. Plenty of food for thought. Karina Sharoff, she takes on this big, the big cause of women in this book, in India especially, and lays down the battle lines <laughs> and her jabs are very intelligent, witty, thoughtful, and true. It's like so, so well done. This is one of my favorite books that I read this year. I, I loved it. I, it was such a surprise. Yeah, God, I love this book so much. That is it. Those are my female rage recommendations for all of us feeling Rachel the last couple weeks now and just need to get some anger out and or like join in or just feel like they're being heard. And believe me, you're not the only one who feels like this. And it's just and it's fun to read about just women snapping and getting a lot of good for her moments. I also want to say I hit 3,000 followers. That's insane. I'm so thankful and appreciative. <laughs> this little hobby has brought me so much joy and I get to talk about and nerd out about things I love like books and horror and horror movies and video games, crafts, and I, I just appreciate you all so much and thank you so much for being here and listening to me gab and I just I just, I can't thank you all enough. I don't know if I have any type of celebration in mind. Um, I think at a certain point, if I hit a certain follower amount, I'll start a Patreon maybe and like a book club, but that's in like, that's like pie in the sky. Right now I'm just having a lot of fun and there's a lot of things going on and this is like such a great outlet for me that I'm not gonna think too much far ahead at the moment, if that makes sense. Um, I hope you all are taking care of yourselves. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and while you're down there, just go ahead and hit subscribe. I really appreciate the support. It means the world. And as always, thank you so much for clicking. Thank you so much for watching and I'll have a new video for you soon. Bye! Bye.